Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are making some gorgeous, elegant, and simple rosemary mint bath bombs. Now you've seen me do a lot of really fun, bright, special shaped bath bombs on the channel, but I thought I would take it back to a simpler type of bath bomb that is just as popular, if not more so. This bath bomb will be very lightly colored. It will have a little bit of a botanical on top and it won't have any embeds in it because the star of this bath bomb is the essential oil. We are using rosemary and peppermint essential oils for a beautiful, soothing scent. This bath bomb is one of my best sellers, actually. And if I were to take a bath, it's probably gonna be the one that I would reach for the most. The essential oil blend of rosemary and mint together is both soothing, but uplifting at the same time, if that makes sense. And maybe that's why it's one of my favorites. So if you're interested in seeing how I make these bath bombs, then keep watching. So for today's bath bomb, we are gonna be using just a little bit of apple green bath bomb dye to give it the most beautiful mint green color. And to scent this bath bomb, we are gonna be using rosemary and peppermint essential oils. And for decoration, we are just gonna be using the tiniest pinch of these blue cornflower petals. It is now winter here in Ontario, so the humidity has dropped. That, in addition to the fact that we have the heat going on in my house, has really taken the humidity out of the air. When I turned on my dehumidifier the humidity gauge in there read 52 so i'm actually not going to be using my dehumidifier today 52 is a great temperature but in order to help my bath bombs just a little bit more in this drier weather i'm bumping up my oils i'm bumping up my water but only by a little bit so the reason why i decided to film this for you guys is because of the time of year i think these rosemary mint bath bombs are actually kind of christmasy <laughs> both in the minty and rosemary scents but also the color of it as well as a very light green but these rosemary mint bath bombs sell well all year round so i'm going to start by measuring out my baking soda into my kitchenaid mixing bowl and then adding my color right to the baking soda so here is my baking soda measured out and I have here just a bit of water that I'm going to be adding to my baking soda. This is the amount of apple green dye I'm gonna be using. It's just a few crumbs. And the reason why we don't wanna use a ton is because we just want a very light mint color for this bath bomb. Add that to the water, and you can see how it's coloring it already. And I have here a little stirring tool that I'm gonna to use to disperse that dye right in that water. Since this is wet with some dye, I'm just gonna put it right in here. And then we're gonna pour this into the baking soda. So pro tip when you are adding your color to the baking soda, I like to make a little furrow in the middle of the baking soda so that when I pour the dye in there, it stays in the middle because if you don't, it might run off into the sides and stick to the side of the bowl. It's really best in the middle where the paddles of the mixer can really disperse it into the baking soda and it's not sticking to the sides. So we are going to measure out our dry ingredients, add them to the baking soda, and then after that, measure out our wet ingredients, add them to the baking soda, and then also measure out our citric acid at the very end, as you can guess, right into the baking soda. <laughs> So I've just added my citric acid and you can see this beautiful mint color is coming through. I love it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my spray bottle and spray this mix. I do four squirts, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then I let the KitchenAid do its thing and have it incorporate the water into the mix. Then I stop it and then I do another one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four and then 
repeat. <laughs> and that should give me a mix that's wet enough to press in my bath bomb press. And I also wanted to quickly add that the amount of squirts that I give this mix will depend on the season. So for summertime, it's going to be less because the air is a lot more humid. And for wintertime, I've added a few more squirts of water. So here is my mix. I'm going to transfer it into a water bowl for easier pressing or easier molding, I should say. Okay. So now that I have my mix here, I have my corn flowers in a bowl. That's going to be right over there. And for today's bath bomb, I'm going to be using the bath bomb presses two piece round, I think this is their medium round mold. And this is the first mold that I started with when I first started making bath bombs. And I absolutely love this mold. It makes bath bomb making so much easier. To start, I'm going to sprinkle a very thin layer of these blue corn flowers into this mold. And I'm going to spread out the cornflower petals a little bit with my finger and then I'm going to cement those flowers in place by just dumping a little bit right on top of those flowers and then I'm going to continue filling lightly and I like to make little furrows along the way because I like to make little air pockets in the bath bomb which helps the bath bomb to float and as I get nearer to the top I'll press firmly down like that and what that does is to help me make a nice clean bath bomb ring around the middle of the bath bomb and so I'm just gonna keep filling it until it gets nearer to the top and once it's like this then I clean off the edges because if you don't the bath bomb mix is gonna fly everywhere so the cleaner the edges the less bath bomb mix you're gonna be cleaning off of the machine <laughs> so I have a bit of a furrow that looks like that and the reason why you want a bit of a hill when pressing is because that's going to be where the bath bomb is rounded the most. And so you really want more mix in the middle so that when it's pressed, it's an even smooth edge. So let me go ahead and press this for you in this bath bomb press. So for the bath bomb press machine, we have a little bit of a groove here and I'll show you what that looks like. And that is where the bath bomb mold will sit. So up here is the top piece of the mold. I said it was a two piece mold, but it's actually a three piece. And the third piece is up here, screwed to the top. The bath bomb goes right into that depression so that it lines up perfectly with this top piece. And then there is a switch over here that you press down with your thumb. And then there's also that switch up here, which you bring forward after you've pressed that other switch down with your thumb. So it's kind of a two, one, two punch. And I will show you how quickly this guy comes down onto the bath bomb. It's quite quick. And that has made a beautiful, smooth bath bomb. And here's the bath bomb here. To unmold it, I like to loosen the seal by twisting the two parts, the ring and the bottom piece in opposite directions. And then I flip it over onto my hand. I continue twisting it and that releases the bath bomb right into my hand like that. And you have a beautiful, perfect bath bomb. And so to transfer it onto the bath bomb tray, which is also from the bath bomb press, I will kind of rock it to its side a little bit, always cradling it. And let me see if I can get a better angle of this. So this is a tray from the bath bomb press and these little depressions fit these round bath bombs perfectly. So to transfer it from my hand into the tray, we're just going to rock it back and forth and let it fall into the hole naturally, just like that. If you are finding that your bath bomb business is taking off, then I highly recommend you invest in a machine like this because it really helps you make a lot of bath bombs really fast. And I do find that these round bath bombs are my most popular shape. I have been experimenting with more unique shapes with those hand press molds, but these round guys are, people love them. This time of year is funny for bath bombs. Um, unless you are seasoned, 
it can be a bit of a disaster because it's hard to know just how much or how little moisture you should be using for bath bombs. I know for me, it's something that I still struggle with to this day, but a few tips to know what's wrong with your mix is if you're pressing it in this machine and it cracks right away, it needs a little bit more moisture. And I don't mean more sprays of water because if you add more water to mix, you might find that it does more harm than good. And I find that in the past, when I tried to make my mix wetter with water, I've ended up ruining it. And it just gets worse and worse. And I can't make anything with that bath bomb mix except bath bomb dust <laughs> or bath bomb and bed powder. So a fix is definitely adding a little bit more oil. And I'm not talking about five grams more or 10 grams more. It's literally one gram at a time until the mix presses and stays together. Now that is advice for the bath bomb press. When it comes to a handheld mold and you are pressing it and it comes apart, it's the same problem, but you might find that you'll need a lot more oil when using a hand press mold versus this bath bomb press. When it comes to these simple bath bombs, these one color bath bombs that don't have any embeds in it and are just scented with essential oils versus my more fun ones that are decorated with glitter and sprinkles and all that stuff, I find I don't have one type that sells more than the other. There are fans of both and I have noticed in my sales that when people buy the bath bombs, they put both types into their cart and I think that it's good to have the variety but if you're gonna ask me which type sells better I have no clue <laughs> they both sell good this bath bomb press machine has been a lifesaver for me this holiday season I've been behind in a lot of my wholesale orders and I've been behind on my website because of the situation that I'm in right now, Kill and I are moving out of province. But a machine like this really helps me pump out a lot of bath bombs in a short period of time. I think I now have um, my manufacturing time of making about 20 bath bombs down to um, 20 minutes. So it's like a bath bomb a minute. <laughs> when I first started making bath bombs, things like the weather changes, and not knowing how to deal with that really slowed down my production. So if you're at a point where you're kind of new to this and you're experiencing a change in season and your bath bombs aren't working out, don't be discouraged. I would just keep going. A lot of people don't realize that when it comes to fixing a bath bomb mix, it's increments of a few grams at a time, which unfortunately might mean a lot of failed batches. But if you stick with it, like I did, then, then you'll find that all of those failed batches have taught you so much about bath bomb making. I also think for these rosemary mint bath bombs, the blue cornflower makes such a beautiful contrast to this really pale green color. And I just, I love it. I love this bath bomb. Some close up unmolding action for you guys. And I get better every year and I learn more every year. I really think it's worth the learning curve because bath bomb making is something that you definitely want to master once you your business takes off because those seasonal changes will bring you to your knees. Like it did for me when I first started. I thought I had the perfect mix all summer and then winter hit and I was like, what the heck? Why aren't my bath bombs coming together? What is going on? It's really scary as a business owner when you have orders that you have to fulfill and you are staring at a bunch of bath bomb dust. That should be a bath bomb, but it's not. <laughs> so I get it, I've been there and it is tough. So this is all to say, don't give up. I've been there. 
stick with it because bath bombs are probably my best selling product in my in my line. People keep saying that bath bombs are just a trend and they're not gonna sell well the next year. I find the opposite is actually happening. The demand for this product just grows and grows. So I would definitely think that if you wanna start a skincare business or a bath or a soap business, adding bath bombs to your line is a no brainer. Here's the last one. Twist, twist, twist. Flip, twist, and there you go. <laughs> I have a little bit of dust in here. And what I like to do with that dust is I like to make one more mini bath bomb. And I like using this heart mold from the bath bomb press. It's four pieces. It's the sleeve. It's the mechanism that presses the actual bath bomb and the bottom piece. And there's the top piece that's screwed to the bath bomb press um, that's already in there right now. But the reason why I like using the heart mold for my the last bit of bath bomb dust that I can't make a, a round bath bomb with is because this mold forms a bath bomb no matter how little bath bomb mix you put into it. And I make these little mini bath bombs to add to my orders as kind of thank you gifts, as kind of, as definitely thank you gifts for people who order from my website. So I put the remaining bath bomb dust in here. I'll put this on top like so. Hold on a second, I still have more dust that's here that I need to clean off. This is how little I like to waste things. I grab every bit of bath bomb dust as I can from the machine put to the top of the heart on top, like that, and then I press. And to remove the bath bomb from this mold, you just flip it over. Okay, so now the bottom is at the top. I take the top part off, and this will be the front of the bath bomb, and I'll push it through. I'll grab this piece of the mold, and then I flip it over onto my tray and if it's still stuck I kind of give it a tap and it releases. <laughs> here are examples of heart bath bombs that I've made and over here is what happens when you have a lot of bath bomb mix left over. <laughs> you can make a pretty decent sized bath bomb and right here is the heart that I just pressed and you can see how it makes a perfect heart that stays together and when it hardens makes just the cutest little bath bomb sampler that I like to package into my online orders as a little bit of a thank you gift. Still really cute bath bombs. It's like a little bath bomb sampler. <laughs> and here are the finished bath bombs. I think they just look so cute. They're looking a little paler on my camera than they actually are in real life. Um, but you can see this gorgeous pop of blue from the cornflowers just really adds the perfect touch to these bath bombs. and. I don't know if you guys saw that, but it was honestly just like the tiniest pinch of corn flour, and that makes such a nice impact. So once these bath bombs are made, they need to dry overnight, and typically they take about 12 to 24 hours. If you are trying to lift them from the tray and they are stuck in there, they just need a little bit more time. Never force bath bombs to come out, unless they feel really hard then they pop out a little bit better. Um, they might still be a little bit stuck, but it's, a, it's safe to pop them out. Because I find that if they are just a little bit soft and you try to take them out before they're ready, they'll just break them in half. So give them time. I like to have them dry in a dark, cool place that's dry, obviously. I actually have a room where a dehumidifier runs 24 seven, and that's where these guys rest <laughs> until they're ready to package the next day. So if you guys are looking for the exact recipe for these bath bombs, including the essential oil blend that I create for these bath bombs, that's all found on my Patreon and have that linked in my description box below. And speaking of my Patreon, thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely amazing. Without your support, I could not make the videos at the quality that I have been making them lately. And I just really thank and appreciate all of you guys, especially my bubble BFFs. My fellow business owners, these guys are amazing. 
I've linked their businesses in my description box below. Check them out for some inspiration and also to just look at their beautiful products that they've created. So that is it. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you want to see more, then subscribe. And until the next video, keep smiling, keep making amazing, beautiful Christmassy things like rosemary mint bath bombs. And I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.